and welcome back to my channel. Last year we've talked about both hemoperfusion alone and hemoperfusion combined with hemodialysis using a dialysis machine. But what about using a hemoperfusion machine? Did you know that there is actually one? However, question is if we could use a hemodialysis machine for hemoperfusion, then why still use a hemoperfusion machine? All these we are going to find out in today's video. We are going to get to know the hemoperfusion machine, set it up in Prime, and also review the hemoperfusion video. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hemoperfusion versus hemodialysis machine. Let's first compare how closely similar the two machines are and what differentiates them from each other. This is the hemoperfusion machine. Its look and features are more closely similar from that of a Fresenius dialysis machine. From transducer ports, liquid level monitors, bubble detector, choke clip which is its SAD detector counterpart, cartridge clip, heparin pump, blood pump, down to its control panel that also consists of the venous and arterial pressure monitoring, blood flow rate, the hours of treatment, heparin interval rate, temperature, and the different alarms. It is somewhat a dialysis machine that is shrank to a quarter size. The differences are it does not require an RO system and dialysate, so it does not come with rods and coupling. This means you can use it anywhere and anytime. This leads us to a good argument as to who should use this kind of machine. Is it a dialysis nurse or a critical nurse and why? Leave your opinions in the comment below. Hemoperfusion machine parts. The power button is at the back part, one switch, the power light turns on in the front. And so are the buttons here, if pressed, the light turns on. System. This signals the start of treatment that will automatically be activated after bridging and the operation here will light up. You can manually press it too, but if there is no blood yet, it will alarm. The system time can be set in this part. The left arrow button lets you switch to a particular digit place where you can change it by then clicking the arrow up and down buttons. Blood pump. Nothing to explain here, but setting the blood flow rate can be done in this part. Setting this up is the same with the system time. This one, on the other hand, is the diameter size of the bloodline that can be found in its package that is either 6 or 8 millimeter. For this machine, the diameter is already fixed and the default size is 8 mm. The center part, as discussed from the lecture, is not used, so I don't know also what's this for. Heparin. Unfortunately, we have not tried the machine in an actual procedure, so I'm not sure how this functions. But from the look of the heparin setup, which looks similar with Fresenius, I assume if pressed, the set heparin dose will be given and set interval rate will then start. So this is the part where you set the heparin time, flow rate. The same process goes with system time. Warming. This is the same with the conductivity temperature in a dialysis machine, but since there is no dialysate, they have their own blood warmer to complement the body temperature when blood passes through this machine. The temperature can be set in this part. Here's the left arrow button for switching different digit places and the up and down buttons to set the particular digit for temperature. Bridging. As from what I've understood, bridging is kind of slowing the blood pump or as discussed, this is used when transitioning to the next process, which is system. Off sound. This simply mutes the alarm. The different alarms are in this part, so you are aware as to why the machine is alarming. The center panel consists of the front pressure or the arterial pressure and the venous pressure. I don't know how the button works since we have not used this in an actual setting. But if you do know, please comment below. The lower parts are as follows. The chambers are located at its both sides. The arterial chamber or the liquid level monitor is at the right side. Then this is where the arterial pressure monitoring port is. At the left side is where the venous pressure monitoring port is located. Then liquid level monitoring below and the blood warmer at the bottom. 
Setting up the machine. Starting with the arterial chamber, the liquid level monitor has a kind of a door lock that you need to turn and switch to open, and place the chamber inside and close it back. Depending on your preference, I usually reverse the chamber to prevent the air inside. Don't forget to close the small clamps. Next, the blood pump. There is also a door lock on each end of the blood segment, so you need to open that to place it inside. Then, the front pressure monitoring port is just right above the liquid level monitor at the right side. Place the remaining line wherever, then let's proceed to the venous lines. Start with the liquid level monitor, next the venous pressure monitoring port, then connect the venous patient's end to the arterial patient's end. Then place the lines after the chamber inside the blood warmer, then threading it inside the bubble detector, then the choke clip. I think to open the choke clip, you need to press the choke clip button. For the extra lines, the machine also has clips where you can clip it there. Next, heparin. The syringe, I believe, requires a 20cc barrel size, the same size with Fresenius, but I'm using the 10cc syringe for demo purpose only. The heparin pump also has a door thing, so you open that and place the syringe inside. Then for the plunger, you have to fit the flat end inside the heparin pump plunger. Next, connect the infusion line. and start priming. The NACL is for demo purpose only. In an actual hemoperfusion, D5 water 500 ml should be used for initial priming. Starting with the venous lines, make sure the roller clamp and infusion clamp are open, then press the IV solution to prime it by gravity. Once the priming solution reaches the venous dialyzer end, close the big blue clamp. Then for the arterial line, you can now use the blood pump. Make sure to set it as low as 100 ml per minute. Simply press the blood pump button to activate. Once it reaches the arterial dialyzer end, stop the blood pump. Next is the hemoperfusion cartridge. First step is to drain the sterilant by opening both the end covers. Connect the arterial dialyzer end at the bottom part, basing from the cartridge label orientation. Then don't forget to place the chamber on its proper placement before starting the blood pump. Drain the D5 water solution and wait until consumed. Once done, stop the blood pump. Connect the venous dialyzer end at the top header. Disconnect the venous and patient's end. Make sure the big red and blue clamps are closed before disconnecting. Place and clip the venous patient's end on the draining bin, then open big blue clamp. Change the D5 water solution to PNSS 1 liter, then start blood pump. Drain the solution until consumed. Once done, stop the blood pump. Change the PNSS 1 liter to heparinized 1 liter PNSS. Mixture is 5 cc heparin incorporated in the 1 liter PNSS. Then start blood pump. Drain the 700 ml heparinized PNSS. You can also try removing the bubbles in this part by gently tapping the top header. Once 700 ml is drained, stop the blood pump. Put the lines back to recirculation mode by connecting again the venous and arterial patient's end. 
Make sure the big red and blue clamps are open. Recirculate the remaining 300 ml. Heparinize PNSS for 25 minutes. BFR for the first 20 minutes should only be 100 ml per minute and for the last 5 minutes, increase to 200 ml per minute to help remove air bubbles. Stop the blood pump. Change the empty or remaining solution to plain NSS. Set the system time and you're good to go. That's it. Hope you learned something from this video. If yes, don't forget to click like, leave a comment for video suggestion, and of course, subscribe to my channel. Happy Chinese New Year! Xinyan Kuai Lei! So stay tuned as I take you with me in discovering nursing career. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. See you next week.